Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Ale Garau. Red Vault. Where we've had some pretty big things going on lately. And not big bad things like we've had the past few years either. Big good things. Well, anyways, let's get ourselves settled before we dig in. Below us, we can see Ale Garau. All the Martians are busy at work going about their business. Currently, we are under attack. We have plenty of food, plenty of drinks, and the merchants have just arrived for the first time in about two years, which is really an event. Although it looks like something is up with the caravans, so I'm hoping to get more information about that, but I guess we'll see what happens. Before we deal with that though, there is something we have to tackle. Kind of an issue, an issue over here, where we have Glitty, our site manager slash broker, currently having a meeting with Aunga Thrunt all day. Outpost liaison. The guy's a bit of a problem, honestly. He's not in a great mood. Can't totally blame him because his wife died recently. Plus, you know, due to the stresses of living here in Red Vault, we've been under attack an awful lot. The merchants have arrived. The guy's got a lot on his plate, but that doesn't excuse murder. And Glitty is a murderer. He killed somebody recently in a tantrum. And I feel like we should do something about that. You know, we can't just let the guy get away with it. We're trying to bring order here to Earth. This place is a damn mess. Okay, now that's something right there. So Glitty's having a meeting with Aunga right now, and apparently the homeland wants to make us an official part of our state. Well, I'm not too sure how to respond, honestly. This is Glitty's decision. So before we commit to anything, we should probably have a look in his mind, huh? First off, yes, we can see he's terribly, terribly stressed right now. He likes being in his office, sure. So at least he has that going for him. Mm, it looks like... Right here, part of his cultural identity, our people generally place cooperation as one of the highest ideals, and also see freedom and independence as completely worthless. That's not just him, that's our people. And checking his personal mind here, he doesn't seem to greatly prefer freedom or cooperation. In fact, he's probably wondering why it took our homeland so long to ask for us to be a part of things. Okay, sounds good. We will become an official community of the Martian realm. But now we have the question of who is going to lead our new community here. That could be a problem. Really, nobody in Red Vault has led the fortress for very long. Well, we do have the former site manager slash cook, Suino Venino, mother of Oogle, remember? She always struck me as a Martian with a very good head on her shoulders. We do have to remember that Glitty is the one making this selection here. And he doesn't strike me as a type to appoint himself to a position like that. But I could imagine him being pragmatic and appointing someone like Sweeno here, even though she might not want the position. I think she'd be well suited for it. Yeah, that's what we'll go with. There we go. And ha, ah, looks like Unga has some news for us. Wonderful. That's what we were hoping. Really want to find out what's happened to our civilization in these past two years, if anything. We do have to request something from the merchants too before we get out of here. Gonna have to do leather. We are in need of leather. We do have a ton still, but more is not gonna hurt anything. Also do cloth and silk. Other than that though, I think we'll be fine. Er, oh right. Remember, we had requested some exo armors last time the merchants were here. I doubt they'll bring them this time, but couldn't hurt to ask for some, right? We'll ask for the steadfast ones again. Really hoping they bring them this time. But yeah, other than that, I think we're all set for now. And having a look here for next year, they're gonna want um, eh, a bunch of garbage. Rings are going to be the easiest thing for us to make, so we might make some of those. I, I don't know. We'll play it by ear. I'm not feeling 100% faithful they're going to arrive on time next year. Yeah, we'll see what happens. But yes, the trading. We have to do some trading now. Going to get that out of the way with our broker, Glitty. We have to get him up here if you he can stop throwing a fit for a minute. I imagine it's going to take a while for our Martians to bring all the items to the depot here. We are bringing up a bunch of stuff, a bunch of garbage too, a lot of tattered clothing that the traders seem to like. That's one of the reasons we wanted so much leather actually. Our clothing is starting to uh, starting to get a bit worn out. You can see some Martians there bringing gems in too. We have a lot of crystalline glass byproducts for making all those windows. Crystal crafts, large intricate crystals, stuff that we can't really use but they're good for trading. Oh and a bunch of those guns too, the sword headed rail rifles. We have a whole bunch of those. But yes, I think that should do it for now. Let's commence trading. Okay, let's see what they brought here. I uh, got some ropes, got some barrels of drinks. Oh, would you look at that? Valiant Exo Armor. A whole bunch of it too. Ooh, what else did they bring? Oh man, I didn't think they'd bring all that Exo Armor or all this leather and cloth. Oh man, yeah, they brought a whole bunch of stuff. 
Wow, they really came through. I was not expecting that. Awesome. Okay, well, let's commence trading. We'll take some ropes and some exo armors, of course. We'll have to see how many we can get. Um, we'll take the cheaper, crappier models just because, like, we don't have all that much to trade. Damn it, we had a couple of years. We should have prepared better. Uh, let's see how much we can swing here. We're going to mark all of our goods for trade. Oh, wow. Okay, so... Yeah, it looks like we've got some stuff to trade here. What are we trading? That's so expensive. We're trading 169,000 worth of profit right now. Is that, oh, hmm. Ooh, wow. Okay, that's what's doing it. These large crystalline glass gems. That's expensive. Oh, wow. Oh, wait, wait a second. That one up there, that one's worth 6,000 by itself. Damn, that's not bad. Cool. Okay, we are good to go. Let's see how many of these bad boys we can get. Actually, you know what? I, can, I imagine we could take all these Valiant Exo Armors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, that's going to be 16 right there. Got some Exo Legs here. We'll take them. Looks like we have some Exo Helmets. Yeah, we'll take those. Uh, Exo Arms. Sure. We'll take a bunch of cloth, a bunch of leather. Oh, man, that's really exciting about those gems. I was not expecting them to be that much. Our jewelers are really an asset, apparently. Didn't even realize it. We'll have to keep them hard at work. That might have to be our main export. Gems. I wonder why they're so expensive. You know what? They probably use them for, like, optical sensors over in the capital or something. Maybe in the production of walkers or something along those lines, eh? That could well be the case. Maybe they're used in the lasers of some of the great factory cities. Could well be the case, right? I'll bet it is. I'm just very excited right now. Okay. I think that's gonna about do it right there. Let's give them a trade. There we go. We gave them a nice trade right there. I realize it was an excellent trade too, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. They haven't been here for two years, so I'm hoping that this will cause them to bring even more next year, perhaps. And maybe this will help spark some migrants to show up too. Actually, we had this disturbing message just before we did that trade. The fortress has attracted no migrants this season, which is a big change. I can imagine word spreading about that forgotten beast attack, or maybe those dragons too. Maybe Red Vault's known as a dangerous place to be. Not great. But again, hopefully this trade turns that around. This is a fine place to be. Especially now that we have that armor. That's very exciting. But before we do anything with that armor, there's a few things we have to attend to. First off, we gotta check on the news from the homeland. See how our people are doing. Okay. So, I'm gonna hit N here for news and zoom out a bit. And, well, frankly not seeing a whole heck of a lot. Or anything at all, I should say. Yeah, there's nothing. Well, that's stupid. I'm gonna hit this to see our holdings, and yeah, nothing. Our home homeland is over here. You can see the flashing X, and we don't have any news. There's no news. Very strange. The caravans didn't show up for two full years, and when they did show up, there was only a couple of them, really. Just tiny wagons. Oh, sure, there'd be some sort of interesting news, but it doesn't look like there's a blessed thing, so alrighty then. Okay, that's the news, and now the next thing we have to do is see to Glitty our site manager. Now, the guy's a murderer, and we still haven't dealt with that. And now that Red Vault is starting to become a name out here in the long night, we can't just let things like this happen. We're not some wild place anymore. He has to be punished. And so we convened a meeting of some Martians in prominent positions and uh, asked to see what they thought we should do. Bromley suggested imprisonment to a 3x3 cell, which has a desk slash chair and a demotion to bookkeeper from his cell. So he'd no longer be a site manager or a broker, I guess. Though he does do pretty well at that task. Um, maybe not bookkeeper, maybe, maybe a broker. Not too sure. But I do like the idea of replacing him as site manager. He shouldn't be in that position. Another Martian, Silo Can, also agrees that he should be imprisoned and also agrees that he should be demoted to being a book nerd. Kind of put that in quotes. So no more site manager. Another Martian, Chris Teen, says prison time. And then we have some outlandish suggestions like uh, Rast, who wants him to fight the next Forgotten Beast one on one. Uh, clever, but maybe a bit too brutal. <laughs> Trying to get things under control here in the wastes. Maybe we'll save that as a special punishment. We'll see what happens. Now, just so I don't leave you wondering, that right there is not part of the game. That was some of my patrons from Patreon right there. I just martianed their names up a little. Figured it would enhance our game a little bit. So yes, unfortunately for Glitty, it looks like prison time is on the menu. And also a demotion as well. And so we're going to be replacing him as site manager. And instead, hmm... Well, we do have some options here. Of course, one of the top picks is Pinnick Plampress, who is a former site manager, the one that was in the position before Glitty, I think. 
Yeah, we're going to choose her and also assign to her his quarters. And as for Glitty, we're going to assign him a new quarters over here on the side. An imprisonment cell, I guess. It's not going to be three by three. We're going to make it a little bit better. We don't really want the guy to go completely insane in there. He's already not doing so good, but again, he has to be punished. Oh, and you know what else? He is our broker right now, so he has to get out in order to, uh, you know, deal with the traders when they show up. Which, you know, we're not letting him out, so we're just going to appoint someone else. Uh, we're going to do Nair here. Congratulations on your promotion, Nair. Hopefully you don't go insane and kill anybody. Anyways, okay, so yes, we're going to get that cell carved out, and Glitty will soon be dealt with. Just hope he doesn't kill anybody in the meantime. Hey, would you look at that? Looks like our trade is already paying off. A new group of migrants has just arrived. Hopefully this will get us back up to 100 Martians. Love to see what happens. Looks like it's only a couple. Yeah, we're up to 98 now. It's not bad. It's not bad. I'll take it. And I'll tell you what, how about while we're outside here, we take a look at our Narverp progress. You can see it's coming right along. We are starting to hit some of the tricky parts, the tops of chambers down in Red Vault. Got to figure out how to carve things around them, make it look pleasing. Also trying to keep those paths intact, the ones that lead up to Red Vault's entrance. It is a big puzzle, that's for sure. But we're getting there, we're getting there. You can see we had a little bit of trouble over here, actually. There was a cave in. Because right under here is that little fortified area that was in the ceiling of that room in which those rail gunners used to sit to shoot down at forgotten beasts and stuff. Remember that? If we go down once more, this is the place where we put all those walkers, remember? Yeah, we ran into some trouble here. I accidentally carved into the ceiling. That's fine though. I have to imagine that before long, this area is just gonna kind of be freestanding, like a tower, I guess. In fact, this tunnel that leads down to the caves, that's probably all gonna be exposed, huh? Yeah, it's a very interesting puzzle. Now then, Heading back into Red Vault for a moment, that exo armor that we got. I believe it was 16 suits of it, right? I think so. Enough to get a full squad outfitted anyways, along with arms, legs, and helmets. The only problem left is weapons. We don't have enough weapons. So what we're trying to do right now is get some more grade C. We ran out along the way, but after we do get some more, I'm going to start making some pile bunkers. That seems like a promising weapon. And after we get about 10 of those, we're going to start outfitting a squad. How does that sound? You know, it's kind of funny. I actually just realized that we haven't been focusing on our military all that much. In our early days, we seemed pretty gung-ho about it, didn't we? Going out and attacking our enemies and all that sort of stuff. Funny how a couple of dragon attacks can put a damper on that whole idea, huh? <laughs> Time to get back into it, though, I think. Yeah, after we get enough equipment, we're going to set up a new melee squad with exo armor and pile bunkers. Pretty excited for it, too. Look at these rail gunners, by the way. They always impress me. It's fun watching them practice like this. They're really good at what they do now. Just wish we could put them to the test somehow. Soon enough, I'm sure. Moving on now, if we have a look over here at the eastern side of Red Vault, you can see this rather spacious and well-appointed prison cell. Yes, that's right. This is Glitty's cell. Now you can see there are two chambers here. One is absolutely packed with food and drink, and the other is his quarters. He's got a bed, a cabinet, table, chair, a couple statues. It's not too bad. I mean, it's a punishment to be sure. He can't be out and about in Red Vault anymore. Can't see his daughter, which is actually a terrible punishment for his daughter too. Um, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? The murderer is locked away. Note too that somewhere along the way, he lost all of his stress and now he's just doing A-OK. -okay. I don't really know why that is, but yeah, here he is doing fine. He seems to actually really enjoy looking out his windows at Red Vault passing by. Maybe it's a nice way to de-stress himself, force himself to just kind of sit relax, reflect. Honestly, not too sure how long he's going to be in here. It can't be just a slap on the wrist though, so I mean, he murdered somebody, right? A Red Vault official too, it was our jailer. So really, he might end up being in here for the rest of his life. We'll play it by ear. We're still trying to figure out this whole legal system. I am kind of glad to see him doing okay though, honestly. The rat bastard. Oh well, moving on. Well, actually, not moving too far, because you may have noticed when we were talking just then, we had a couple of excavators carving out around Glitty's cell. That is right. Having a look right over here, you can see that his cell and this whole level of Red Vault is being exposed to the air now. And Red Vault itself is almost a freestanding structure. That's very exciting, isn't it? If we move up from here, you can see the surface. We have a pretty wide expanse. This whole area here is just the top of the rooms. Like, we can't really carve down this big expanse here. We might figure out something, though. Again, it's like a big puzzle. Now then, moving on a little bit here, we have something that I'm very excited to show off. The entrance of Red Vault. Normally a pretty boring place, but we've cleaned it up recently. And you can see how nice it looks now. 
No more blood, vomit, bullet holes, anything like that. Not even a single carcass. Quite a change, indeed. But still, it needs something. And I had a little bit of an idea. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm eager to try it. What we're going to try to do is set up a whole bunch of areas up here where Martians are going to come with buckets full of water and then dump them off the side of these fortifications. And once they do that, this concrete below will be covered with water and hopefully some mud too, some fertile mud. What I want to see is if we can actually grow some grass up here on the surface. You know, it hadn't even occurred to me as being possible, but just recently we spotted a patch of grass out in the wastelands and it kind of rocked our world in a big way. So, well, yeah, we'll give it a try, see what happens. And maybe if this does work, we can start in a nice uh, memorial area or something for all those poor fallen Martians. Now I'm already seeing some Martians going and filling up some buckets. The place should be nice and muddy shortly. We do have to keep in mind too that we have just a limited supply of water. And this is probably a terribly uh, foolish way to use it, but I mean, it's just gonna be a little bit of water. It'll be fine, it'll be fine, I'm sure. Okay, and here they come, just walking around the top of the wall here. And shoop, okay, saw them dump the water down there. And having a look, sure enough, the concrete is wet. Now we'll just have to give it some time. I do have a good feeling about this. Very exciting. Alert. Yellow. Five. Lawbreaker reported. Murder. Oh boy. Would you have a look here? Another lawbreaker. That's not gonna fly here in Redfall. I'm gonna tell you that right now. What we have here is a scrapper. One of our scrappers throwing a tantrum and they're standing over a murder victim. They just murdered somebody. I just barely caught it. But yeah, there's there's a murdered person here. And they're not even done throwing their tantrum yet. They used their wedge axe to actually smash in the person's head. That's terribly violent. This person here, we don't really know them too well anyways. Their name is Enifin Picassocto. Bear limbs. Apt. And yeah, they've been in a bad mood for a while. I've been kind of keeping an eye on them, but now it's gone too far. Well, this person has a couple of things going against them. They're not an official. They don't have many friends in the fortress. They don't have any family. And so I think we're just gonna let them be taken by Martian law. See how it rolls, actually. What we have to do here is appoint a new jailer. We still haven't appointed one since Glitty murdered our last one. And so let's see, we're just gonna appoint, um, how about Blee Osquetikny? Sounds good. And they're gonna be the one who oversees our new jail, which is just over here. We just carved it out of the surrounding earth. Man, oh man, I know this entire place is extremely disorienting now. Kinda hard to get a grasp of what is where exactly. But when we get it all cleared out, we'll go over it in some more detail, how about? No point in doing it now. The landscape is shifting too much. Anyways, our new jail is over here. We still have to get some chains installed, but that shouldn't take too, too long. Anyways, yes, back over here to Enifind, still throwing their tantrum in this doorway. Just gonna watch them to see what happens. All right, looks like they're heading down towards the temple. Through this hallway. What the hell was that? Okay, well, they were just shot down by one of our security officers, like as they were running away from that scene. Mm, you know, I know it looks like the game is still running here and you could see people running back and forth over the corpse, but I'm pretty sure what we just had here was a, what's called a loyalty cascade. Think of it kind of like a, like a riot, just pure chaos. Something about that murder set off some of the Martians here in Red Vault. And like you can see here, the same person who killed Enifind also went after a courier. They shot him in the leg for, like, literally no reason. Oh yeah, and you could see him here too in our meeting hall. Uh, they just got brought away to the hospital, but I think we got over the loyalty cascade. I think we're good now. Yeah, it's kind of a dicey thing right there. Right when I saw that courier get hit though, I was pretty sure I knew what was going on. And I think I found out a way to stop them if you catch them, like, right when they start. Actually, I'm pretty sure it works even if it's a full-blown loyalty cascade, but I'll go a bit deeper into that later on. Anyways. Disaster averted, and we don't even have to worry about this scrapper bastard anymore. That's what we call Martian justice here in Red Vault. Well, if you don't like it, you can get the hell out. But yes, other than that little hiccup right there, things are going fairly well here in Red Vault. Starting to run out of time here, so just gonna hit a few things real quick. Up here, you can see the muddied ground at the side of our road, and it doesn't really appear to be doing much of anything. It's taken us quite some time to get this entire stretch muddied, but we're not yet seeing any grass. What we do see here is a, well, a bunch of mud and some other traces of horrible material. I'm not sure what kind of buckets they were using. Like most of these areas just say a dusting of mud, excellent. But then we got like this spot over here, which is smeared with blood. There's sand here, uh, two different types of pus. I, what, what was this bucket? What was this bucket they were using, do you think? They get out of the hospital and there's a lot of gross stuff in there. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Here's hoping grass doesn't mind. I'd really like to get some up here. 
Also, I'd like to take note here that time has passed, quite a bit of time since the merchants last arrived, and right now it's midwinter of the following year. So we're through the following fall right now, and no merchants arrived, so I'm not too sure what their deal is. They're just not coming every single year now, I guess. What, are we not worth the time or something? Yeah, rat bastards, we've been very careful to make a whole bunch more of those jewels, too. They'll be back eventually, I imagine. And hopefully when they do come back, they bring some more of those exosuits. And speaking of exosuits, we just started producing some of those heavy pile bunkers. We've got two made already, and soon we'll have a whole bunch more. No problem whatsoever. I'm hoping next episode we can get a full squad outfitted and start them training. And while we have a look at the nanotechni wing down here, you can see that down to the south, it's all been cleared away. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here, and there we have it. What do you think? That's really something, isn't it? Red Vault has risen to greet the sky. Like, what was that, maybe a maybe three year process? Yeah, it's not too bad at all. Now we just have to figure out where we're going to go from here, I suppose. Here, let's move up a little bit, just so we can get a look at the whole place. From here, we can go up, see the top of the buildings. Up farther, things continue to narrow. You can see some of the walkways coming down from the entrance. Up farther and farther, you can see the farming wing, as well as a second level of the Red Vault Tower Suites. And if we continue up farther, you can see the first level. Pretty much done now. Got a bunch of doors in place, all that stone's cleaned out. And up once more, you can see the Red Vault entrance. Isn't that looking nice? Now, something I should know, we've done literally nothing about the dragons. Remember, we had two pop up in like, what, a year? They were just months apart, I believe. And that was it, just those two, that's it. And we've been lucky ever since. We've kind of put it out of our minds, I guess, which is extremely foolish. But we should be keeping our eyes open, making preparations just in case it happens again. That being said, for now, we're looking fine. Okay. Well, that was a heck of an episode, wasn't it? Again, I'm really surprised we are able to do that much with the whole Narverp progress. Really came along fairly quickly. A very interesting project, too. I've really enjoyed it, that's for sure. I've always kind of, like, thought about doing it, but was worried about how ugly it would look afterwards. But really, this doesn't look too bad at all. And I'm curious to see what else we could do with it. If we had just a little bit more planning, then we could have left some more structures up on the surface, you know? But still, we might be able to do something. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Right as it is, actually, um, as I said, I was, I'm was i still pretty afraid of those dragons showing up again. I don't know how many of those are out there, but like Red Vault is actually in a terrible place because we have our front gate, sure, but like the whole mining entrance where that Forgotten Beasts used to come in from, that whole area is still open for the most part. We don't have any gates or like walls or fortifications or anything. Plus on top of that, there are Martians just wandering around all over the place now in just dangerous, dangerous places. So now at, th at this point, it would be a catastrophic time for one of those dragons to show up. So I really got my, my fingers crossed. That being said, I'm not too sure how much farther this series has to go, frankly. I feel like we're getting to the end of it. Might do just the one more episode. I know, I'm sorry, I know, but some of you love this series. But it's gotta come to an end at some point. Probably just get a couple more constructions in place, do a nice overview, and just see where we're at after that. I think that'd be nice. Usually during any of my series, I, I run a fortress, like, into the ground, pretty much. Like, just go and go and go until we get overrun, or where like the stress system takes us. Wouldn't it be cool to end a fortress on a decent note for once? I think so. But yeah, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Oh right, one thing we do have to touch on is that loyalty cascade that we encountered. Now, okay, the way I was tipped off about it was that in that combat log, I had seen that that courier was attacked by one of our security officers, which was unusual. I knew there wasn't a reason for it. That security officer wasn't tantruming, and so there, there really wasn't any good reason they'd be attacking this courier. So that was a little suspect to me. I went and checked it out, didn't see any good reason for it. And so what I did in that instant right there was um, I took my military off duty, made them civilians, turned on a burrow a tiny little burrow, so they would all stop what they were doing and march over to this burrow. And also that was just for like a second or two, just enough to like shake them up. I turn off the burrow right after that, saw that the security officer was still attacking somebody, so I turned it back on. Then I turned it off and turned it on just a couple times, made sure my soldiers were off duty this entire time, and then I just kept checking that combat report. If anything new popped up, it'd make me a little suspicious, but after a minute or so went by and I didn't see anything on there, we were good to go. And I've had that work a couple times too in my personal games, not necessarily in these videos. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> loyalty cascades are a part of Dwarf Fortress at this point. I'm pretty sure it's a bug, even though a lot of people in the community think it's like a, like an actual riot or a barroom brawl that gets out of control or something. I don't believe it's something that's intended at all. 
And so if you note something odd like that, and you know what to look for, I think you can fix it reliably. I haven't tried this technique and had it not work yet, but we'll see. I could be talking out of my ass too. Remember, when it comes to the Dwarf Fortress community, including myself, do not believe anything 100% until you see it yourself. Very good rule of thumb when it comes to Dwarf Fortress. Anyways, my bearded bastards, I appreciate having you here to listen to my rambling and my crazy Dwarf Fortress antics. It really means a lot to have you. I hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I certainly hope to see you next time here in Elgarau, Redfall. And until then, you bearded bastards. Oops.